Welcome back to VH Wonder. This is our Let's Play series on villagers and heroes. And today we're going to talk about crafting. So there are four crafts in the game. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, what you can see here on your little hotbar down here is all four of them. There's wood crafting, there's tailoring, cooking, and smithing. We're going to learn all of those today. When you first get in the game, they give you this nice little quest uh, person, this NPC, as the uh, pros like to call it over here, right next to Otto, which we already did the Master Gatherer um, quest line. So now we're going to talk to Elta and get our craft. There's a certain elegance to crafting. It's so much more than mere sweat and labor. It is art. And you, my friend, have the makings of just such an artisan. Crafting is a very big part of Villagers and Heroes. So she's going to get us some lessons. Uh, she's pretty much going to have us go through all of all four of these crafts and kind of get us started. Now, if once you enter Gandy Mead Grove and you hit M for map, or you can click up here in the right corner, um, you will see that three of the people we need to talk to are over in this corner. So let's head that way. Okay, the first person we come up to is the carpenter. So that's gonna be wood crafting. It's pretty good for all classes. Um, you make fine beams out of the wood that you've gathered and you can use that to make shields and bows and staffs and maces. They also make um, a salve that increases the accuracy and critical strike of your weapons. So let's learn. Ah, can you smell it? Nothing quite like the sweet aroma of fresh sawdust filling the air. <laughs> uh, just like with the gathering quest line that we did um, in a previous episode, we go through all of the crafts and each crafter will also give us um, a certain number of, I don't know, tasks, quests in, in order to raise our skill level and kind of give us an overview of what that skill has to offer. Okay, so if you decide to go ahead and start off with um, start off with the crafting before you start doing gathering, that's perfectly fine. Um, this game actually uh, the the NPCs give you everything you need to start doing these uh, newbie quests. So he wants us to make two pieces of pine or take two pieces of pine and refine them into softwood beams. So we just go over here to a lathe, right click and a menu pops up. And whenever you have the items for a, a particular recipe, it's generally on the top. So here is the softwood beam and we can make them one at a time. We have gathered some items, so we have more than what he gave us. Um, just like that. Now also what we can do is, you see here there's a slider. You can drag the slider and make multiples with just one button. But every time you do that, for each one you do, uh, you use up one of your Moat of Yorix that you get when you are collecting items. So if you wanted to make, if you had enough pine to make 50, you could spend 50 motes of Yorick as well and click make and it would just take one click to make 50 of the items and you would get all the experience for that as well. So as you can see here, making two, we've reached level two in uh, our skill. I didn't want to use my mode of Yorick, so. I'm quite impressed with you. <laughs> Woodcrafting is your calling, I'd say. <laughs> He's going to give us 10 motes of Yorick, which is awesome. And we get regular experience plus the woodcrafting experience, just like we did. Uh, we got, you know, gathering experience from those quests before, too. Okay, now here's where he's teaching, uh, teaching us about salves. And here's where, yeah, he tells us they temporarily increase a weapon's accuracy. So now we take the beams that we made in the previous lesson and make an aiming salve. You don't have to track the quests, I just like to. So here is the aiming salve on the list. 
Um, also, if you wanted to, you could click here. Uh, this is your list of refined ingredients that you know, and this is your list of carpentry items that you know. Um, if you specifically wanted to make shields or whatever, you can kind of see what what's involved in making those. Um, say you wanted to make a dependable bow, you could click on it, and then you could see how many items you needed to create to get this item created. So that's not so bad. But we need aiming salves, and we need to make apparently one of them. So we have to use a simple decoration, which he gave us one, and we're all set. How goes the carpentry? Can't get enough, can you, friend? Okay, we're gonna make uh, signets. It's it just simply says that they're used to make more complex items. Okay, and we have to get to level five before we can make them. Uh, so he's gonna give us some extra materials so we can do that. Here's the signet. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but that's uh, that's what there it is that we have to make. Uh, now we need to have four layered beams and we have zero. He did give us enough uh, alewife fish, so that's okay. So let's go ahead and make the four layered beams. They would be over here in the ingredients. And here's that. And now here I'm gonna show you if we make four, we're gonna use up four of our modes of Yorick. But we only have to click once. And now we can make one of these. And I believe uh, a signet is simply um, an ingredient for complex items. So yeah, it says right here that their wooden frames and oiled surfaces make them prime materials to receive magical imbuements. Okay, so they're a little more fancy. I'm quite impressed with you. <laughs> Woodcrafting is your calling, I'd say. <laughs> okay. The other thing we can make is a carpentry repair kit, which helps us fix all the stuff that we make when we make woodcrafted items. So that's pretty useful. Carpentry repair kit. We need two layered beams to so go over here. Layered beams, two. And then we can make our carpentry repair kit. How goes the carpentry? Okay, now we're gonna make a warrior shield, which is good because we're a warrior on this uh, on this character. First one we have to make is a sentry's obstructing shield. So when we look through the shields, the sentry's obstructing shields down here, we click it and we can see that we need two layered beams. He gave us two bronze pigs and the silver's just gonna come out of our bank. I don't know if they give you the silver or not. I assume so, because he says he's giving you everything to start with. Um, so two layered beams we have to make. And then we can make our shield. Pay attention to which one he asked you to make, because if you make the wrong one, you'll have to ask him for more materials and make the correct one to complete the quest. How goes the carpentry? Can't get enough, can you, friend?
Now we're gonna make a paladin's mysterious shield. This one we have to use two layered beams. So we go over here. Layered beams, two, and we make them. How goes the carpentry? Can't get enough, can you, friend? Okay, and each one of those has different stats, so it depends on what kind of warrior you want to be as to which shield you'll want. So, let's uh, start the next lesson. Oh, wait. Yeah, and then he's explaining, too. You can use Nogmenting to combine their powers, uh, but we covered that in another video already. Extracts and drams. So, uh, the ones that are most useful for a warrior are drams, which temporarily, temporarily increase your protection to various elements. Your options are a fiery dram one, a sinister dram one, or a vi viperous dram one. So I want you to look at the recipes for them and choose one to make. They use different materials, so I'll give you enough to make one of each. Okay, so we only have to make one dram. And where are those listed? There they are. A sinister dram, if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what it can do. This is protection against shadow damage. Uh, the vi viperous dram is protection against poison damage. Where's the other one? Oh, here it is, fiery dram. Protection against fire damage, obviously. Let's do the fire damage. We have to have two pale blazons, he gave us two. We need two layered beams, which we have to make, and two Viridian monarchs. Uh, and apparently we gathered some, he gave us two, but we had some when we did our gathering uh, quests already. So, two layered beams coming right up. Now, will this make two? I have no idea. We're just going to do it that way. Oops, I made four. Well, we have extra. Fiery Dram. Now we can make it. How goes the carpentry? Can't get enough, can you, friend? final lesson. So he's going to have us make a plywood chisel, but we have to get to level 10, which we did. Uh, but if we didn't, he would give us enough materials to unlock that level, which is good. Now here you'll see special and quest items, um, which is interesting. Here's the plywood chisel we need to make. This chisel is made from plywood beams and it boosts wood crafting experience by 5%. While it's, yeah, that's all. 80 silver, 50 plywood beams that we have to make and the one chisel. I think we have the one chisel that we were given to start with. So we're going to burn that one to make a better one. Plywood beams, 50, now remember, Whenever you're going to make multiples, you're going to make, you're going to use up that many mode of Yorix. We have 431, but I'm going to burn through them for the purpose of this video, but really, really think about when is best to use up your modes of Yorick because you have to gather to get them. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there doing one at a time for 50 without any modes of Yorick. So we got that. And now let's see about our chisel. There it is.
Okay. Now you'll notice we made our chisel, but we don't have the star that indicates that the quest is finished. That's because the chisel went into our bag. And here it is, the plywood chisel, and he wants you to equip it. So double click it. It'll go down here into your items for wood crafting. How goes the carpentry? And that's it. That is wood crafting. And right next door to the wood crafting is the master chef. The secret is in the stirring. Hold your ladle as you would a cherished newborn, with gentle hands and much love. The great thing about cooking is that it's useful for everybody. Uh, as you might guess, it can make powerful health and spirit potions and also give you certain boosts to experience and uh, power boosts as well for attacks. So right now he wants us to make some tart applesauce and he, I believe, gives us the requirements to make it. Uh, or maybe we already have them. Let's see. I'm gonna go over to one of these cauldrons. And down here, our menu bar switches to the cooking menu. And you can see we have a cooking spoon uh, equipped. You don't have to quest for that or buy that. You're, you start off, your character has one starter set of everything you need to craft. So tart applesauce is what we need to make. We need one green apple and two red apples. And we have enough of all of that. And just so if you are curious, um, if you hover over the tart applesauce, you can see what it will do if you consume it. Um, your total health is increased by two hit points for 10 minutes and restores two health over seven seconds and lasts for seven seconds. So it's a pre pretty neat little, little potion, little recipe. Remember, the secret is in the stirring. How are you and your little doing? Okay, now, he's telling us that everything else we make has to have decorations. They're used in a lot of other crafts besides cooking, which we saw over at the woodcrafting. I think uh, one of the items required a decoration. Okay, these are also water-based, so you need to get water from the well. So we're going to track this quest, and we're just going to make a simple decoration. Now, I already have water, I think. Oh, actually, I don't on this character. Different character. Okay. So right here's a well. You just right click. And you get 10 at a time. Which you'll see it'll feed into here automatically. You don't have to click on it to collect it. It'll just, just like with any gathering, it just automatically pops in there. So you can sit here and fill it up. You can hold a thousand uh, in a stack, which is really nice. But I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and watch me gather a thousand water. And there's really no need to. I think I think this is probably enough to get us through our lessons here. Okay, simple decorations. Let's see, what do we got here? Refined ingredients? Bam, there is a simple decoration. Just so you can see right here, you also have prepared dishes and spirit potions. Um, as you level up, these other items that we don't know yet will appear, uh, you know, and become available to us. So simple decorations. We need to have one bluegill. We went fishing already, so we have more than that. And we need one water, which we definitely have that. Remember, the secret is in the stirring. How are you and your little doing? Now he wants us to use the simple decoration that we just made and some apples to make cloudy cider and that will temporarily boost your spirit. Uh, we've started to level up so now we have some health potions available to us too. There it 
is. Um, cloudy Cider is a spirit boost, so it's going to be in that menu. The secret is in the stirring. Hold your ladle as you would a cherished newborn, with gentle hands and much love. Okay, now we're going to do some potions. We're going to make one of each, a minor health potion and a minor spirit restoration potion. The health potion wants us to make a simple decoration, so we're going to do that first. And then we can make our minor health potion. Now we want that minor spirit restoration potion. That one also uses a simple decoration. It also uses these ants, but he gave us some. And we gathered a couple extra la uh, in our last gathering video. Uh-oh. Did I make the wrong thing? Minor. Minor. What was I supposed to make? Oh, the first step. He wanted us to make two. That's something to pay attention to. He wanted us to make two simple decorations. And I did not. I made them separately. So pay attention to that or you don't complete the quest. So I'm just going to make two now. We'll use them. Remember, the secret is in the stirring. How are you and your little doing? We're going to make some pies. Pumpkin pie. Yum. It's a good time of year for that. Of course, I don't really know when you're watching this, but it's November, so it's a good time for us to have pie. Pumpkin pie. You know what? It's always a good time for pumpkin pie. Um, pumpkin pie. He gave us everything we need for that. We don't have to make any ingredient uh, decorations or anything. It requires a pumpkin and a cinnamon, and he gave us one of each. What do pumpkins do? Pumpkin pies do. They're so great. Um... Experience gained from combat, gathering, and crafting is increased by 10% for two hours. Okay, pumpkin pies are pretty cool. The secret is in the stirring. Hold your little as you would a cherished newborn with gentle hands and much love. Okay, now this is a good luck potion for when you're gathering or crafting. Minor potion of the triad. He gave us some bugs, so I guess we need bugs. Minor potion of the triad. Here it is. What do we need? We need a melded decoration. So let's make one of those. This requires an alewife fish and one water, which is fine. Okay, and that item, uh, your luck and prosperity while gathering, crafting, and working in your village is boosted by 3%. This includes recipe cost reduction while crafting, abundant harvests while gardening, and both lucky find and bonus supplies while gathering. And it lasts for 10 minutes. It is a minor potion, but that's pretty cool. Remember, the secret is in the stirring. How are you and your little doing? Hey, 
Hey, we're gonna make some breakfast. Yum, a poor man's breakfast. I like all breakfast. Okay, poor man's breakfast. What do we need here? We need a small ham, two small eggs, and some copper. He gave us everything we need for that, so we're just gonna make it. And ham and eggs, what does that give us? That is a boost. Uh, all damage is increased by four points and lasts for 30 minutes. I assume that means all damage against, like that you do against something else is increased because you wouldn't want to damage, you wouldn't the want damage increased against in you. <laughs> Hold your ladle as you would a cherished newborn with gentle hands and much love. Now we're gonna do dinner. Fine poached fish. Hmm. Okay, it's on the list here, but it's not, see how it's gray, it's not white. So that means we don't have all the ingredients we need to make it. So we look at the recipe here and he gave us the alewife, he gave us potatoes, but we need a melted decoration. So just cl click over here. We need alewife for that as well, but we only need one, so that's okay. We have enough. Then we can click back to the dinner, see the fine poached fish. And that should be good. And what does that do? Total health is increased by five for 15 minutes. Remember, the secret is in the staring. How are you and your little doing? We're going to create Liberty Dram 1. Hmm. We need to reach level 10. We're at level nine. So we're gonna make a few things. There we go. Uh, Liberty Dram, there it is. So now we need two blended decorations. <laughs> Now this one has an X on it. It means that we can't use it yet. The required level to use this dram is level 10. And our character, as you can see, is level eight. So we won't be able to use this for two more levels. But it protects against most stuns, snares, and slows by reducing the duration of the negative effects by 65%. The reduction amount is diminished against enemies more powerful than level 14. Okay, lasts for 30 minutes. The secret is in the stirring. Hold your little as you would a cherished newborn with gentle hands and much love. This is the final lesson. We gotta make our spoon, the butter spoon. See down here, we have this cooking spoon, but we're gonna make a blending spoon, which will give us a bonus to cooking from now on. If we go here, we can see the blending spoon and we need to use our cooking spoon, which we have, and we need 50 blended decorations. Whew. So we'll go over here to decorations, blended. We'll take our slider and move it up to 50. Remember, if you don't wanna use all of your moats of Yorick, you can do them one at a time. But for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna do that. Okay, now that we have our blended decorations, we can go in and make our fancy spoon. This spoon, uh, when we have it equipped, will all cooking gains, all cooking experience gains are increased by 
All right, and just as before, he won't acknowledge that the quest is done until you equip it down here. Double click it, it'll pop into your cooking inventory. Remember, the secret is in the stirring. How are you and your little doing? And that's cooking. Right next to cooking is the master smith. Smithing is the craft that you'll want to use if you're a warrior. Uh, they can refine metals into ingots. They call them pigs in this game. Uh, and they can make things like swords and armor, boots, belts, gloves, like the heavy armor type of stuff. They can also do things like make fine powders that will temporarily enhance weapon damage. We are the melders, welders, and fasteners of the world. Okay, first thing we had to do are pigs. Ingots in other games, uh, or I don't, I don't really know if blacksmithing, I don't know blacksmithing terminology for realsies. So <laughs> pigs are ingots in most other uh, smithing games that, that I've played. Okay, now she has given us the materials we needed, but I think also we have some extra from when we did our gathering. Okay, one little tip I will say. Something about the anvils is weird. If I run up to it and right click it from this side, I, I don't get the menu item. It's really frustrating. I always have to approach it from this side and then I can get the menu. So that's just a little tip. Hopefully it's just a bug that they um, that they figure out soon. So how many did she want us to make? Two. And two, two, two. Boom. Two. Um, I don't think, yeah, yeah. If you hover over the copper pigs, um, you can see they don't have any bonus or stats of their own. They're just, uh, material to make other items. You have to craft the metal you gather in the wild or in your village. You have to craft it into a pig before you can use it in smithing. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Okay, now we're going to learn about powders. They can be used to increase your weapon's damage temporarily. So she's going to give us all of the stuff that we need here. We already have the pigs from the last one. And again, uh, because I'm running up to this side of the anvil, it'll be okay. Keen powder. There it is. So we have simple decorations because we made a whole bunch when we were trying to level up to 10. And I think she gives us some too. And the copper pig too. And we have that because we just made them in the last lesson. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Just to hover over the keen powder, you can see that the weapon damage is increased by two points, lasts for 10 minutes. It's a consumable, so it's kind of like a potion that you get through smithing. All right. She wants us to make ring mitts. So let's make us some mitts. Again, I can't approach the anvil from that angle. I have to do it from this angle. So mitts, the easiest way for me is to click over here and see which ones we need. I think she wanted us to make brazen ring mitts. I hover over here just to make sure. Yep, brazen ring mitts. So uh, they take two copper pigs, but we used ours up in the last lesson. So we're gonna make some more. Now we can make those mitts. Okay, 
and here we have level three brazen ring mitts and they also have some bonuses already on them how go your smithing pursuits Okay, she tells us we can sell them, use them, or salvage the materials, and she'll have us make a better set later. Okay, now she wants us to make a weapon, a ragged wavy blade. I click on the sword here, and ragged wavy blade, so I can see the recipe, it's two copper pigs. Click down here to the ingredients menu, copper pigs, two. Now we can make our blade. Make sure you pick the right one for the quest. She told us to make a ragged wavy blade. Okay, there's our ragged wavy blade. It comes with uh, two-handed damage and slash ability. And it's a level four item. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? All right, now she's gonna have us make a repair kit so that we can fix all of our stuff when we're out in the field. Here it is, smithing repair kit. We need 10 copper, which we have, and two bronze pigs. And this would allow us to fix stuff like swords and armor and other smith gear. How go your smithing pursuits? All right, she wants us to make a Baroness Dignified Short Sword. This is going to take two bronze pigs. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Right, we're going to make a belt, a, sav a Savage's Fierce Scale Belt, or a Cadet's Persevering Splint Belt. Look at the recipes and see how they enhance your character and decide which one you want. I paraphrased. So we're going to go over here and look at the belts. And the Fierce Scale Belt. Let's see, what does it do? It boosts rank by one for a max of five and boosts swift gear and it boosts sword storm. And the other one boosts defender. And so this is more tanky and this is more like dual wielding and damage. And that's what I am. So I'm going to pick the savages fierce scale belt. I need two bronze pigs, a tanned leather, which she gave me one. So that's okay. And there we go. Uh, and just FYI, if once you start learning tons of stuff, you can like click on the belt and then turn off, like see what's for warriors. Those are all for warriors. Um, and then also 
if you deselect it, you'll see your entire list of stuff and it won't be sorted. How go your smithing pursuits? Okay, now we're going to make some Savage's Fierce Scale Mitts or Cadet's Persevering Splint Gauntlets. Depending on what kind of character you rolled, uh, mine's more, like I said, DPS, so I'm going to go with the Savage's Fierce Scale Mitts. And I'm just going to look at the mitts. Two bronze pigs. A satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Now we can make the boots and we have the same options between the two different types of character. And just to point out, she gives us this tanned leather. In the future, when I want to make this, I'll have to acquire that tanned leather in order to make this item. They don't give it to you every time. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Now we're going to make a shirt. Same options. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? This is the final lesson. We're going to upgrade this hammer, or smithing hammer, to a better one. Just like you did with the spoons and the chisel. Here it is, Iron Hammer. It'll boost our experience from smithing by 5%. We have our hammer, we need 50 iron pigs. Okay, just like before, she won't register as this complete at that it's completed until we actually equip equip it. Goodness gracious, uh, my tongue is tied. There we go. Double click it in your inventory. It'll equip it down here in your smithing hotbar, and then she'll notice that you're finished. You've got a satisfied look on your face. How go your smithing pursuits? Finishing these quests give you quite a bit of items and experience, it's really worth it. And that's smithing. Now the only craft that's not available in Gandymede is tailoring. And I don't know why, but we have to go to Dagmar Strand <laughs> And it's over here in the center. Esther Estates, you'll find the Master Tailor. 
Now, don't be pricking your fingers, that's the main thing. We don't want any blood getting on our fine wool. Say, how about I give you a lesson in tailoring? Okay, he's gonna give us the materials we need, and he wants to take he wants us to take the two tattered pelts and turn them into two rawhides. You can go up to any spinning wheel. There's a few of them around. The menus look the same. Well done, my friend. You're a born tailor, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so now he's going to give us the materials to make two homespun. Well, look at you! Your hands don't have a mark on them! Tailoring going well, then? Okay. And what he's explaining now is that tailoring recipes require both of those items, either leather or cloth. Okay, now he wants us to make a dissipating scrap. Okay, a dissipating scrap uh, provides protection against physical damage. Uh, let's see, oh, protection against physical damage is increased by one point and it lasts for 10 minutes. So it's kind of like a spell or a buff you get through tailoring. It requires two homespun, which we've already made, a simple decoration. Uh, he gave us one, but we also had some from doing our cooking already. Tailoring going well, then? Okay, now he wants us to make a chipped badge. These are used to craft other items in tailoring and in other trade skills as well. He gave us everything we need, five apricot jelly mushrooms and three Lindsay Woolsies. Or did we already have the Lindsay Woolsies? Hmm. I think he gave them to us. Well done, my friend. You're a born tailor, and that's all there is to it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna learn are drams. We've made a couple of them in a couple other crafting professions, but tailoring has them too. So we're gonna look for chilled dram one or righteous dram one. And if you hover over it, you can see what the benefits are to each one. We need two chipped badges. We have one, because we already made one, and some monarchs, which we have, and some Lindsay Woolsey, which we have. So we need to make one of those chipped badges. Then we can make our chilled dram, I think. Oh, no, I forgot we need to make our Lindsay Woolsey. I'm gonna go ahead and make a ton of Lindsay Woolsey so we don't have to keep coming back and making it.
There we go. There's our chilled dram. You could also make the righteous dram to complete this quest. Well, look at you! Your hands don't have a mark on them! Tailoring going well, then? Okay, the next one is a cambric spool. Increases the experience you gain from crafting. There it is. We have one, we need 50 cambrics. We're just gonna make all 50 at once. What did I not write? Do right. Uh, equip the spool from my inventory. Okay. There it goes. Well, look at you! Your hands don't have a mark on them! Tailoring going well. Alright, that's it. Now, just to point out, um, if I were a caster or a healer, he would have had me make armor for myself. I only made armor in the smithing because I'm a warrior. They give you, the, they tailor the quests to your character so that you make useful items for yourself. And that's tailoring. Oops. Now that we've done all of the crafting, we can return back to Elta and turn in our quest for ah, Master Crafter. the artisan returns. How fair your efforts. There you go. You're a Master Crafter. Okay, you're maybe not a Master Crafter, but you got a good start. <laughs>